the press conference via Zoom, if you could use the hand feature uh, to ask a question, we'll make sure that you're able to get that question to a student athlete or coach. Thank you. Welcome the student athletes of the Indiana Hoosiers out of the Big Ten Conference, record of 20 and 13. On the end of the table is Tra Trace Jackson Davis. Uh, in the middle is Xavier Johnson, and uh, closest to me is uh, Race Thompson. We will uh, start with questions here in the front row. Uh, Trace, I know you guys probably aren't allowing yourselves to think too big picture, but when we talked to you a year ago around this time, you know, you kind of admitted you had one foot out the door before Coach Woodson came in. You were sort of thinking about life after Indiana, but you wanted to come back kind of for moments like these. I mean, is there validation in a, a, a moment like this, or do you just sort of think like there's not validation until the journey's over and maybe you won some games and that sort of thing? Um, even just – what happened in the Big Ten tournament, honestly, just solidified me coming back and how it was such a great decision. Just the joy that that brought me and just doing that with my teammates and experiencing that was just huge. But yeah, again, you can't get too high. You can't get too high on yourself because we still got a lot of work to do and um, we're here playing today and we play tomorrow. So we're ready to gear up and go. Uh, in regards to addressing our student athletes, if you could provide your name and your affiliation, that'd be great. Thank you. Race two. Is there some benefit from just playing a bunch of games right in a row and just getting right back out on the floor here um, without any of that, uh, any low? Is that confidence you guys built up over the weekend just carrying it over? Uh, I mean, I feel like we got a lot of confidence coming in. Um, I'm playing a whole bunch of games back to back, and it, it's important, and, and, it, and it tells us about our legs. And now that we got a day, well, you got to win to go to the next next day, and we got a day off, so it's going to be a, be a better team. Trace or, or Race, you want uh, to? Yeah, I definitely think there's some benefit to uh, just uh, not having much time between games. Uh, we play well in Indy, and hopefully uh, we can put that together and carry it over here and get a win. Second row. Uh, Chris Hagan, Fox 59. Trace, uh, the benefit of during the season, there were so many close games you couldn't close out, but to be battle tested last week and find a way to get through and bust the door down. What kind of confidence does that give you, knowing that all these games could be just like that? Um, it's a really big confidence booster, honestly. I think that um, the Big Ten is a gauntlet, and um, we competed with almost every team every night. And so just finally getting over that hump um, in the Big Ten tournament and winning a few of those games, I think, really boosted our confidence. So We'll stay in the second row. Uh, Jeff Rapp, Johns, Pigs.com. Xavier, your thoughts on the two guys sitting up there with you. They were both had the opportunity to leave, right, you know, in the portal and all that. They stayed. Give me a player's view. What have they meant to this team and this program with you guys getting back to the NCAA tournament? Uh, I mean, it, they meant a lot because uh, when I first got here, you know, they, they, they opened up with, uh, with, 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 cl with close arms. Uh, they both were close. Uh, they, they kept every, everything close. Everything was family. From, from day one, and, and they're they're a big big part of our uh, program, and, and they're they're a bit the next up. In the front row, Gracie Barr inside the hall. Xavier, yesterday you tweeted they'll pay for it after the selection show. Um, just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on where the committee um, evaluated your resume and if that's going to make you play with more of a chip on your shoulder. Uh, it's definitely going to make us play with a chip on our shoulder. Uh, I mean, I'm not disappointed that we didn't make it, but uh, we made it so. I mean, we're going to have to come, come ready to play. And, and I'm the two guys next to me are going to get the team ready to play, too, as well. And, and it just didn't put a chip on my shoulder. It put the whole team on a chip. Uh, we're all going to play with a chip on our shoulder, honestly. Second row. 
Yeah, uh, Kevin Brockway, CNHI, Indiana. Uh, this is for either Trace or Race. Um, what, what have you learned from about Wyoming in the last 24 hours? And uh, they have a, kind of a physical post score, and I know you've seen a lot of those in the Big Ten, but your, your thoughts on matching up with uh, Graham Ike? Um, yeah, he, first off, he's a great player. Um, lefty, um, likes to back down, go to the basket. But they also have a point guard who's 6'7", um, and he likes to back down as well. So um, we got to just be locked in on defense, take stuff that they want to do away, and then um, just communicate with each other. I think we have the best defense in the league, and what we do in the Big Ten, and one of the best in the country. So we're just going to have to show it. Second row. Uh, Dustin DePierre, Bloomington. Uh, X Trace, the pick and roll you guys have started to use more and more over the last couple of weeks is obviously it seems like it's added a lot to your offense. I mean, just how did this, the chemistry come together with that, and how much do you think that's ex been, has expanded what you guys have been able to do uh, offensively over the last couple of weeks? Uh, I mean, honestly, we, we've been doing this since day one. Uh, uh, me going off the ball screen, going getting down here, and Trace, I see Trace just running, running from the, off the screen and, and, and jumping, jumping as high as he can, can to get the ball. It's amazing to me how how how. how, how how athletic this dude is. Because uh, when I first came here, it was, I was actually shell shocked. I'm still shell shocked at how many times he could just jump. Yeah, kind of going off what X said, we've always had that connection. But um, I think overall, in the last few weeks, uh, we've talked to Coach Woodson. I think that, especially with a lot of bigger guys that we're playing against, bigger, slower guys, I think that the pick and rolls worked a lot better. So we'll go to the first row here. Keegan Nixon with the Rivals.com. Race, with these quick turnarounds, what's it like having a guy like Cliff Marshall to help get you guys prepared, get you hydrated, and get your bodies in right shape? Uh, yeah, Coach Cliff, he's always uh, pushing us uh, electrolytes, uh, making us stretch, making us foam roll, uh, giving us massage guns. Uh, and I mean, really just sending us stuff to help us take care of our bodies. So, I mean, he definitely helps us a lot and uh, learn about taking care of our bodies. Uh, he always tells us to be a pro. So uh, with him, uh, he just really gives us uh, all the tools we need to do that. Let's go to the back of the room. Our question here, can you take me back to when you guys were real little kids playing the game and how many times you played this tournament in your mind? Second question, emotionally, when you went back to your dorm room, when you're at your apartment back on campus, what was your emotional moment? You're like, yeah, I'm going dancing and stuff like that. Were you fist pumping? What was that like? Uh, so I guess I'll start. Um, so back when I was a little kid, I always just dreamed of playing in the championship game and hitting free throws and for the win. I won't say what team it was because I'll tell you it was in Indiana. But, um, yeah, so <laughs> it's always been a dream playing in the tournament. Um, and finally getting that opportunity I think is really cool. But after um, – after the, we got selected, um, I was really relieved because I was really anxious leading up to it, especially going through it, not seeing our name until the final uh, bracket was, uh, was a little nerve-wracking. But um, finally just having that uh, like pressure off your shoulders and you're finally playing for something, playing for a national title, I think is really cool. Xavier, you'd like to answer that question? Uh, for me, I just always watched it. I mean, I can't really say with team either. So, uh, but I mean, when, once I said our name called, uh, I mean, I, th I think a lot of people see my, see my uh, reaction. I was kind of, I was, I was, I was happy that we made it, but I was kind of disappointed by where we, where we fell at. But I mean, I'm just happy to be playing and, and you know, we're ready to compete. And race? Uh, I was definitely excited. Uh, my whole life, I'd watched the NCAA tournament. Uh, Dreamed of playing for a national championship. What team? I don't honestly. I don't. I just wanted to play. <laughs> I just wanted to play it for real. And then uh, just that sigh of relief when uh, uh, we finally made it. Uh, like Trey said, it was one of the last teams uh, to be called off. So uh, I mean, definitely just felt good to make the tournament, and that's what we set out to do this year. So we we'll take care of it. Let's go to the second row, far side. Mike Pegram from uh, Peaks.com. This is a question for Xavier or Race. When, when Trace kind of found another level in the second half of the Michigan game, what was the impact to the rest of the team at that point in moving forward from the rest of the tournament? Uh, I mean, it was big time. Uh, I mean, because we know what he's capable of. And, and when, it, when Coach jumped on him and, that, and, and said something to him, uh, I think, I think it, it just hit a lot of – it hit everybody in the whole room. And, and it hit, everybody just had a different energy come out in the second half and, and for the rest of the games that we played. Let's go to the uh, second row here on the near side. Yeah, Race, Mike Schumann with the Daily Hoosier. You've been here longer than anybody, waiting for this moment longer for, than anybody. What, what in your mind clicked these last couple of weeks to make this team different 
than, than any of the other teams that you were on before? Uh, I mean, we were right there. A couple of the teams that I've been on, uh, we weren't really, like, been on the last four and been there. But uh, this team really felt like we could really feel that we were right there. We were able to play in the tournament. And uh, we really just talked about locking in for a, a month and taking care of business. And we ended up doing that. And now we're playing the NCAA tournament. And it's really exciting for us. Front row. Uh, Tyler Tashman with Inside the Hall. Um, this is a question for Race and Trace, kind of a two-parter. Um, one, it looked like, I think it was after the Michigan game, uh, Race, you kind of gave a, gave Trace a hug uh, in the post-game line. What, what do you guys remember about that moment? And also, what is what has just been your guys' favorite part uh, of seeing each other grow kind of throughout your college years? Uh, uh, yeah, I gave him that hug because uh, me personally didn't have my best game that game. And, uh, Luckily, uh, Jordan Geronimo was able to step up and have a great game. Uh, Trace obviously had a great second half. Xavier had a second half. I mean, uh, I mean, I didn't really play much in the second half, so I was just telling him, like, yes, bro, like, thank you. Thank you, bro. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, yeah, definitely. Uh, I've seen Trace grow not only on the basketball court, but uh, just, like, in life. And uh, it's fun to watch. And I think he could say the same. Yeah, kind of what Ray said. Uh, I don't even remember it, really. I was so amped up and just surreal that we won. But at the same time, just watching race grow over the years, and especially just from last year to this year, because last year he was already such a big presence. But even going further and how much he's grown his game from three-point shooting to just rebounding and just overall, he's been one of our best players on the team. I think it's been huge for us, and we wouldn't be in the position we are without him. Let's go to the second row here. Jeff Rapjohns, Peaks.com. Trace, this is for you. You said something like um, you took about 20 minutes in your first conversation with Mike Woodson or something like that for you to decide, hey, this is a guy I want to play for. What was it and sort of how has that played out throughout this year with your relationship and, and developing un under, under Coach Woodson? Well, I think Coach Woodson's just the big emphasis with him was family and um, – and I trusted, I trusted him from the get-go and what he was planning on doing, what our goals were. And one of those goals was winning a Big Ten title, and we were one game short of that, and then um, winning a national title. And we have a chance to compete in that. So um, right now, there's nothing wrong. And um, I'm really glad I decided to came back. Stay in the second row. Chris Hagan, Fox Indianapolis for Trace. <laughs> Growing up in Indiana, you know how much basketball means to Hoosiers. I know you're playing for your teammates, you're playing for each other, but do you feel that sleeping giant of the IU fan base and how much this means to get back into the tournament of such, after such a long drought? What kind of pride do you take in, in carrying that banner? It's a huge pride, honestly, um, especially just, um, just you can feel a different type of energy in the air, especially after that Big Ten tournament run that we had. Um, it's, it's when we're playing good ball, it's just a the whole state is gets behind us and I think it's really cool and I know that now coming here today and we're going to see a lot of red in the stands and I honestly can't wait to get back on the floor on us so let's go second row here Xavier Mike Schumann with the Daily Hoosier to, to who or to what do you credit your kind of mid-season acceleration of your level of play uh, I mean three weeks ago my grandfather died and uh, I mean, it just hit me, hit me a lot, and I was playing well before that, and and he's one of my biggest fans, and I know he's still watching, and and, and I dedicate my game to him. Second row, Dustin DePierre again, Bloomington Herald Times X. Also, uh, Trace mentioned uh, their point guard, Hunter Maldonado, six seven guy. It seems like it's kind of a contrast of styles between you two. Obviously, you like to get up and run. It seems like he likes to play really slow and deliberate. What's your kind of read on that matchup at this point? What's impressed you about him, and what do you, how do you see that sort of contrast playing out? Uh, I mean, he's here. I, I believe he's a good player. Uh, uh, playing in the Midwest, uh, averaging 18 points and six assists. Uh, that's that's big time. Uh, but I mean, I, I don't think he has. He's played against the type of guard that, that's that's actually gonna 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 pressure him a lot up, up the floor. And, and so I mean, I'm just ready to compete tomorrow against them. First row, near side. <clears throat> Sorry, X Zach Osterman, uh, Indianapolis Star. I wanted to kind of rewind to talking about the pick and roll. You talked about how good Trace is around the rim, how quick he can get up, how often things like that. But how much have you seen him improve in, in kind of the start of those plays, bringing the screen, the handoff, his footwork, and kind of getting into the role, and really just kind of knowing that the chemistry between the two of you, always knowing where the two of you are when you are kind of attacking that way? Uh, I mean, I mean, honestly, it was just 
I, I think it's just God giving talents for him because uh, he honestly had always had it. Uh, we just started doing it more and more constantly down the stretch and, and, and figured out that was something that was working. And and now, now we're gonna we're gonna keep doing keep working on keep doing the two man game and, and, and get my I'm getting my other team, other teammates involved as well because we got great great all around pieces as well. Just a couple more questions here. Let's go to the back row. All you guys know that um, uh, Mike Woods and his uh, Indiana uh, basketball. Uh, what has he brought to the program this year? Um, honestly, Coach Woodson to me has just brought a light. I feel like Indiana basketball has been in the darkness for so long now, five or six years, drought, no tournament, no even competing. Um, so just him coming in and just even in his first year um, doing the things that he's done, like beating Purdue, who's be beat us eight straight times, beating Michigan, um, and then making the tournament. I think it's just – it's huge not only for – for him, but for the state and for everyone that roots for us. And so I think he's given this program hope, and um, I can't wait to see what happens in the future. Xavier, Race, you want to add to that? Uh, I would say I agree with Trace. Uh, uh, the program has been in dark for a little while. I haven't made the tournament. And uh, him coming in, his, his one of his main messages is that's what we're going to do. Like, we're not going to set our goals any shorter than the Big Ten Championship and the National Championship. That's what we're going to set out to do every year. And we fell short of the Big Ten Championship this year, but we made the NCAA tournament and have a chance to play for the national championship. So I think he, he just brings that light to Indiana basketball. A question via Zoom. Uh, Patrick, a question for our student athletes. Yes, guys. Uh, this is Patrick Waring from the MBS Sports Hour. Uh, first question is, is for Xavier. Um, I'm here in the D.C. area. I know you, I know you played at O'Connell. Just wanted to kind of uh, just kind of talk about your journey a little bit, kind of who who helped you get to this level. Um, anybody that you want to thank from back home? Uh, I mean, the first person I want to start with my dad. Uh, my dad, he, he got in the gym with me me eight hour eight hours a day uh, when I was a sophomore in, in, in high school, and when I was told I wasn't gonna make varsity in my sophomore year, and he put he pushed my limits. Honestly, that's the first person I want to start with, and and the, and the second and third person is my is uh, Keith Stevens and and, and Joe Wooten. Uh, my, 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 my high school coach and my uh, AAU coach. First row. You guys played three games in three days there, all of them pretty intense, played a lot of minutes each game. What was it like uh, physically uh, in regards to the fatigue factor Saturday night when you were done, and what have you tried to do between then and now to, to have fresh legs for tomorrow night? Um, honestly, with me, um, with all the work that we put in this summer, I, I didn't think it was um, – that big of a deal for me and then just just going on that run um I was actually just ready to play like I was ready to go after the first game I was ready to play the next one after the next game I was ready to play the next one I don't think I think that's how all of our teammates were and um even with that Iowa game that we had I feel like we were still competing at a really high level and I feel like um everyone was wanting to win and uh we set out to win so um I don't think fatigue's big for us when you're trying to win a championship so Second row. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, CNHI. Uh, Race, you guys have had, I think, five straight games that have gone out to the wire uh, here. Uh, you know, you won two, lost three. I'm just curious about that experience and how that can help you if you have another game like that uh, on Tuesday night. Uh, yeah, those games definitely help. Uh, we sit down and uh, break down the film after every game. And uh, we see the things that beat us, and we see the things that help us win the games. And at the end of the day, for us, we end up beating ourselves most of the time. And uh, that's something that we watch on film and that coming in the NCAA tournament that we've learned and can't let that happen. We apologize, but that's going to be it for our questions. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck tomorrow night.
At this time, we're joined by the head coach of the Indiana Hoosiers, Mike Woodson. Coach, if you'd like to start just with a statement. Well, the only statement I got is I'm thrilled to death to be back in the big dance. And the 17 guys that have worn this uniform this season had, has had a lot to do with that. The fact that they gave me an opportunity to coach them and stay on board uh, means a great deal to me from a coaching standpoint. Uh, but like I told them, uh, when we sat in the assembly hall yesterday and got the message that we were going to the big dance, it was great and to celebrate, but the celebration is behind us. We got to look forward and, and uh, I thought we had a pretty good practice today to start preparing for Wyoming. Back of the room. Marco, University of Dayton. Coach, you were a former student athlete at IU, um, led your team to the Sweet 16. Uh, what does it mean to you now that you're able to coach this team? No, it means a great deal. I mean, when Scott Dawson, our AD, called and asked to speak to me when I was in New York as an assistant with the Knicks, um, I was thrilled to death. He flew into New York, sat down with me, and he and I had a great two and a half, three hour meeting. And one thing led to another. A couple of weeks later, I was offered the job. And um, for me, it's like a dream come true. Um, you know, I've been in basketball a long time. Uh, I wore a number of hats uh, as a player, as a head coach, as an assistant coach. But to be able to come back and coach your alma mater, a place where you know, you really, where the university was really good to me as a player when I played for Coach Knight. Uh, and I think I played for probably the greatest college coach that's ever graced the floor in Bob Knight. Um, it's like a dream come true. So it's good to be back. Let's go to the third row. Uh, Michael Presti, NCAA.com. What do you remember about your experience in the NCAA tournament as a player? It's a grind. Um, you know, preparation is so important. Um, and, you know, yeah, it's excite exciting times. Uh, but everybody wants to win, man. Nobody wants to go home. And that's why it's so competitive. That's why when March Madness rolls around, you see all these great, great games, and, and you just walk away shaking your head saying, wow, that was, that was a hell of a game. Um, it's just different, you know. Playing for a Big Ten title, it's different. Um, the play is, is, is so intense, and that's how it should be. You know, it's like NBA playoff. You know, it's, the level of play just goes to a different level. First row in the middle. Tyler Tashman with Inside the Hall. Um, Coach, you've known uh, Race and Trace now for almost a year. Um, what is your favorite part about coaching them? And, and what particularly do they do that embodies what you want this program to be about? Well, you know, when I took the job over and Trace allowed me to, to coach him, I told him in front of his parents that that I'm not an easy coach, you know what I mean? And I'm going to challenge you and push you. And if you allow me to do that, I think you will grow as a player. And he's, he's done that. He's allowed me to actually coach and push him. And I know there's days he walks out of that gym, you know, pissed at me. But, hey, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's just coaching, man. I, you know, as long as he knows that I love him and I'm in his corner, that, that means more to me than anything. Race has been a tremendous, tremendous – player this year for this team, man. I mean, when I took this job, you know, I was picking the coaches that were here about who can do this and who can do that. And, and, and you know, I was, I had done some of my own due diligence on watching film. And the one thing that came out of my coach's mouth that had been here, well, I don't know if you want this guy to handle the ball that much or, and he's a, he's a good player, he's gonna work hard. And 
I told our guys it's our job to to get him where he's comfortable in handling the basketball, and it's our job to to get him comfortable in shooting threes. He's had all the other intangible parts going for him, and he's added that to his game this year, man. And it's been a treat to see him develop, man. It's been nice. It's been, and we've all benefited from it as a team, I think. First row near side. Mike, Zach Osterman, uh, Indianapolis Star. Going back to your relationship with Trace, you've been a Big Ten MVP. You've been, I imagine, what some people would describe the face of this program. Uh, that's kind of where he is now. How have you seen him navigate that, handle the pressure, the expectation, the attention, all those different kinds of things? It's been a roller coaster ride for him. You know, I mean, I've, I've watched him, you know, really as a month ago, you know, it was so intense you could see it in his face, you know. You know, I mean, if these guys would stay the hell away from social media, you know, life might be a little <laughs> bit better, you know. <laughs> no, really. But, you know, he's dealing with the fact that he's, he's a guy who could possibly go to the NBA. He's, you know, he could possibly be at all, you know, an all American All these things are going through this young man's mind. Can you win the Big Ten, you know? Can you win a couple of games in the Big Ten tournament? I mean, there's a lot of things that are at, at, at stake. And I get it, you know, it's a part of playing this game. And my whole thing to him is, hey, you can't wear it. You got to cherish the moment and still grind and work. I mean, you can't run from it. And I thought he stepped up big time, man, in, in the Big Ten tournament. I mean, he, he took it to another level, which was kind of nice to see. Second row in the middle. Hey, Coach. Uh, Chris Hagan, Fox 59, Indianapolis. Congratulations for Thank making the tourney. Uh, sometimes you know a team's identity at the very start of the season. Sometimes it evolves and changes. As we sit here right now, what is the identity of this team as you go into the tourney? Defense has always been our identity, you know, and uh, I made that very clear when I took the job uh, that we had to establish a defensive system because offensively I just didn't know where it was going to come from. And uh, I knew if we did that, we would put ourselves in a tremendous position to win, a, win games. Unfortunately, we've lost a lot of games down the stretch. Um, and, you know, I, I take blame for a lot of that because these young guys, they, they're still learning and trying to figure it out, figure me out, and I get it. Um, but defense is where we've where we've been good in terms of being able to compete all year. And, and as we go into this tournament, we're going to have to stay at that level uh, because I've always felt defense win titles. I mean, it, it gives you an opportunity to uh, I look at it that way. Second row, uh, near side. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, CNHI. Coach, you've coached a number of NBA playoff series. I guess this would be like a, a game seven or an elimination game. Anyone you reach out to? in the college world for advice or anything that you could draw from from that in terms of maybe your approach in, in your first NCAA tournament game? No, I mean, I got calls from Coach Calipari and, and Larry Brown, who's, you know, two of my closest friends, um, you know, that wish me well. Um, but they don't need to give me, you know, at the end of the day, man, I've coached enough basketball and I've been around in a, a long time, man. It's it's about getting these guys pumped and ready to go, man, and sustaining it over a 40-minute ball game. That's what it's going to be about. First row. Sports Illustrated, Indiana. Mike, we haven't had a chance to talk much about your interaction with your three assistant coaches a whole lot this year. But what from those three guys is, have you uh, gained and learned to cause Cost the course of this season as well in regards to working so well together as a staff? Well, again, I mean, they all been in the college game and I've spent all my life in the NBA game. And, but I've always believed coaching is coaching. I don't care what level you coach at. But they have helped me navigate through this college season from recruiting, um, you know, the things I can do from uh, – recruiting um, I mean they they've helped me so much I mean things I can say and not you know do and not do I mean it's just it's it's a lot of little things when it comes to the NCAA that 
you know, you got to be careful of. And, um, you know, when I took the compliance test, man, I mean, it, it's tricky, you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of things that I shake my head and say, okay, wow. But no, they, they've been able to help me. They, they've been great in terms of practice plans and helping me, you know, the, you know, at the end of the day, we all get together and we, you know, we come up with the, a plan and I make the final decision on, you know, how we're going to go into that game and play it. And live or die, they're going to have to roll with me. And and it's, it's pretty much been a learning curve for them too, you know, trying to get to know my style and, and what I'm about from a coaching standpoint. And, and I like to think that I've helped them in that area grow a little bit as coaches. Um, you know, I always believed as a head coach, you know, you you work with your assistant coaches to put them in position one day that they might be a head coach. You know, I mean, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Let's go to the second row here, far side. Hey, Coach. Jeff Rabb, John .com. What was Jordan Geronimo able to do in practice today, and do you anticipate him being able to play tomorrow? I think he's going to play. Uh, you know, he worked a little bit today in practice, so we'll see how it goes. I, um, I'll get a better feel when he wakes up in the morning uh, and see where he is. Let's go uh, second row, near side. Yeah, Coach Mike Schumann with the Daily Hoosier. There, there, there's a lot of talk about, you know, as the season grinds on, you know, some coaches like to keep players off their feet a little bit, not practice as hard as they did. What's your philosophy on that, and how has the, the last week with so many games impacted your approach? Well, I'm still learning. You know, we, we haven't grinded as much um, based on all the games that have been coming at us. Um, but I still always try to get conditioning in. You know, I think that's – you know, our conditioning is fun and it's with the basketball. So that's every day. Uh, but the banging and and going up and down, you know, we've kind of gotten away from that a little bit based on the fact that we've had so many injuries, you know. I mean, people don't mention it, you know. I mean, we lost Galloway for 14 games, man, and, and Rob for 10 games, I think it is. And when we started this journey, you know, they were a major piece to the puzzle. And, you know, I like to think if I'd had them all the way through, man, things would have been a little bit different. But that's a part of basketball. Um, but it's good that we got them back now. Let's go uh, second row, far side. Mike Pegram from Peaks.com. Uh, Coach, what have you learned about uh, Wyoming at this point? What concerns you about them? Very, very well coached, big team. You know, you should start a six, seven, six, 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 seven point guard. That should tell you a lot. Um, you know, Hunter is as good as they come at the point guard spot. Um, they got a big presence inside with Ike. And then they got perimeter guys and Xavier and Drake and Odin, you know, guys that can make shots. Uh, so they well balanced. And you don't win 25 games not being well balanced. So. You know, we got to commit for 40 minutes. It's kind of how I look at it. On both ends of the floor, compete, man, in order to come out of here with a win. Let's go uh, second row in the middle. Uh, Dustin the Pierre Bloomington Herald Times. Uh, Trace mentioned when we were talking to him that, that he had basically come to you recently and approached you about uh, running more pick and roll, basically, that he thought that was something that was going to work. Uh, when did that conversation happen? And how did he approach you? And, and do you like, I guess, your players coming with that kind of input uh, to game plans? No, I think it's great. You know, I'm always open. I've always had an open door policy with our players. Um, you know, if you go back and look at the beginning of our season and probably midway through our season, you know, we tried to run a lot of pick and rolls, but X wasn't there yet at the time. And X has grown so much that it's allowed me to play what I came here to, as a coach to, to play offense is play some good pick and roll along with post up. It's gotta be a balance and a mixture. And we struggled in the pick and roll early on in the season. And I just kept, you know, piecing it in here and there, here and there. And now X has, he's grown. He's figured it out. 
And when I say figure it out, he's figured it out to a point where he knows when he's got it, he knows when he doesn't have it, he knows when the lob or the pocket pass is there, the throwback, all of that takes time. And uh, he's starting to figure it out. That's why we, you're starting to see more pick and roll play. Just a few more questions here for Coach Woodson. Uh, we'll go first row in the middle. Gracie Barra inside the hall. Trace talked about fatigue not being an issue, and you talked about conditioning. But when you're playing four games in the span of six days, how do you mentally prepare your team for that kind of schedule? It's what it is. You know, I mean, really. I mean, you can't run from it. You know, you guys as media, you know, you put it out there with maybe fatigue. You know, guys, you got four games in four days. Hey, this is what you signed up for. You know, and, and again, I say it, these guys are 19, 18, 20-year-old young men. They, they'll be just fine. You just got to go play. Second row in the middle. Coach, uh, Chris Hagan again, Fox Indianapolis. I'm, I'm sure it's different in the college game than the pro game, but we see so many runs this time of year that can determine a game. Do you have a formula about how to end a run or maybe take a time out, letting guys play through it, or is it just kind of a gut feeling? Well, uh, college game, you don't have enough timeouts to me. The NBA, we, <laughs> we got a lot of timeouts <laughs> to kill runs. You know, I, you know I, I, I've gone through this season, man, and – I can't remember, it was a game I think on the road where somebody might have been Minnesota and everybody was barking about, you know, make call time out, you know, kill the run. Well, sometimes it's coaches, I want to see who's going to step up and kill the run themselves for our team. And, you know, Minnesota, we were able to do that, you know, without me burning all the timeouts. Uh, you know, my coaches always tell me I got to have at least one or two at the end and you know I, I all the time I've coached in the NBA I've only used all, my timeouts all of them one time and so sometimes you got to put it in the players hands and, and feel good about it um, and then sometimes you got to you know make the move to, to call the timeout to kill the run last question uh, here in the front row in the middle Tyler Cashman with Inside the Hall. Um, Coach, you've mentioned a couple of times this season just about um, not only wanting to create great basketball players, but also turn them into men and people that are going to go out in the world and society. Um, why, is it some, why is that something that's important to you? Because a guy by the name of Bob Knight did that for me. And I owe it to these young men to do the same thing. Basketball is such a short-lived career in terms of dribbling the ball up and down the floor. You know, these young guys don't know that right now. They think that it's something that's going to last the rest of their life. But there's going to come a time when you can't do it anymore. And that time comes very quickly. You know, there's, it's not a lot of LeBrons and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's that have played 19 and 20 years in the league. It just doesn't happen if you're fortunate enough to get there. So, you know, you got to rely on your education, which is first and foremost with me. And then basketball is secondary. And if you're fortunate enough to move on, great. If not, it's my job to try to see that you go out in the work, workforce and figure it out if I can help you in that area. Coach Woodson, thank you so much for your time. Good luck right. tomorrow night. Thank you.